and Ted. Excellent. Make them listen to Simon and Garfunkel. Hello, darkness, smile. And you get Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Welcome to the show, Luke. You're very excited today. I'm Lewis. always excited. I'm excited to listen to some Simon and Garfunkel. We're, we're also <laughs> going to be advertising Triple M Modern Digital because no one's going to do it for us, so we're taking control and we're advertising our own station. Yeah, we just thought we need to get the word out there today about our show, so then we thought, you know what, let's do it ourselves, so that's what we're going to today. We also <laughs> tried to get a sponsor for the show today. Very important. Every show needs needs a sponsor. We tried that. You'll hear that uh, coming up. And tomorrow is the great race. Luke, how are you feeling? Confident, as always. <laughs> well, you're looking unhealthy, and so that's making me feel great. <laughs> I'll be honest, this is the unfittest I've ever been, and which... You know, some people will be like, oh, uh oh, Luke might lose. No, this is just going to make it way worse for you when I win. <laughs> we'll see. All right, that's, uh, that and more coming up after this. Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. It is time to talk about the great race, which yes. is happening tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Now, uh, you said uh, on yesterday's show, uh, in your, well, when you were talking to Jared, uh, the Paralympian who you raced, uh, you yes, said- I raced a Paralympian yesterday for the race that's coming up because uh, if you don't know, Luke used to be a state-level runner. Uh, he does not run anymore, hasn't run for four, potentially five years, but still talks about how he used to be good. Well, not five, all right? You, every he hasn't day, run for about 10 years. Every day it gets one more year that I haven't run. He hasn't. How old are you? Uh, 21. Hasn't run for about 22 years uh, <laughs> and uh, still thinks he's a runner. So I challenged him to a race. I had a whole month to train every day. He's not allowed to train or move at anything more than a brisk walk. If he moves more than a brisk walk, he gets punished. And I've already been punished twice. Yes. Now, and you think what will help you in this race is when we're talking to the Paralympian Jared Clifford, you mentioned that you wanted to buy active wear from the Nike store. Well, buy yeah. a Nike outfit. You of think course. that will take 10 seconds off just wearing... Nike clothes. Luke, what does Usain Bolt wear when he runs? Active wear. Why? Because it makes you more active. No. 10 seconds more active, to be exact. <laughs> because he's a professional athlete, so he wears the proper equipment. As am I. I've been training for a whole month. Mm. Professional athlete. Yeah. Okay. How much are you getting paid to do this run? Oh, well, I'm getting paid for this radio show, mm. and this is part of the radio show. But so we're doing technically this... professional athlete. We're doing this run out of hours. I'm a professional <laughs> And how have you gone to buy the active wear yet? Um, no, I didn't find time to do it <laughs> yesterday. Uh, I, I, I was supposed to get my matching Nike active wear outfit, and I was also supposed to get the donut costume that you have to wear as punishment. You haven't for got jogging. that yet. No, I didn't. I didn't find the time. I just sent you a text if you could pick it up. I mean, you know, it, it goes from Kmart. I couldn't find the time. You know, Kmart. It's a store. I don't know when they're open. K- Kmart's twenty four hours. <laughs> Okay. How did you not find the time to go to a 24-hour store? Look, the point is, Luke, I asked you to get a donut costume, and uh, I noticed that you've come in today, no donut costume. Right, so you said, oh, I didn't get time to get a donut costume. I don't know how that happened. So I was like, no worries, I'll pick it up before the show. So you pick now, up your own punishment. I Googled uh, Kmart uh, before the show, and I was oh, like, great. Google. That there's one. That would have made sense. That's yeah. a good idea. should have done that. Thanks, man. I just decided that it was too hard. I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> so I Googled it, and I, t- I was like, oh, great, there's one right down the road from the radio station about a kilometre away. Oh, is so there? So I walked down there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, great, I'll pick up this for the show, I'll be back in no time. Wait, you went to Kmart? Fun. So I walked down there before the show to go to Kmart. Okay. And I get there, Kmart Auto Tire Repair, <laughs> not, <laughs> not not the store, not, not Kmart, <laughs> like, so you know they have like their, yeah. their car stores? Yeah. Yeah, it didn't say that on the map. I so, can show you. It did not say come out auto repair. And then I just thought, oh, I should just buy a tire. It's like a black donut anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you walked into the tire shop and you were like, hey, do you have any like any circular items with like a hole in the middle? Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, we got heaps of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you want? Four? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, but I didn't have getting it. Came back without a uh, donut costume, so still don't have it. So you can go get it tonight. I can't be bothered. I'm not right. buying a punishment for myself. Yeah, that's true. I'm not going right. to hinder myself on purpose. That's stupid. Okay, fine. I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. But in saying that, I do need my car repaired, so I'll probably go back to Kmart tonight. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. I'm 23 years old now. So that's, well done. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. I made it this far. Is, am I an adult? No, you're currently wearing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles jumper. <laughs> I am. And uh, I look absolutely fabulous. Um, no, the reason you look why- like a four-year-old. 
I know, but the reason I asked that is because I don't feel like an adult. It, but it, like, I'm 23, but I don't feel like an adult. But I had this uh, moment on the train on the way to the station where I realized everyone my age that I grew up with is now an adult, and I don't think I'm there yet. No, because you have, still haven't taken off the jumper. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. This is what happened on the train. I ran into an old school friend of mine, um, a girl I used to have a crush on a few years back, back in high school. I haven't seen her for like years and years and years. We used to hang out all the time. She must have been like, wow, look how far Lewis has come. <laughs> still wearing Teenage Mutant. <laughs> Taking the train to work. <laughs> Um, so we get talking about life. This is life. why she didn't like you back. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. If I was wearing a suit, I could have got a number. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we get talking about life and what we're up to. And she tells me that what she does is uh, internal auditing. And um, it was like a big high level job. She was dressed in full business gear. Her hair was back. She had makeup on. She looked like, like a woman. You know what I mean? Like an adult human being. And then I'm here with my Teenage <laughs> Ninja Turtles jumper. Going um, to your little radio show. Yeah. And, uh, and she starts telling me about this internal auditing. Basically, she detects fraud within the business because it's a multinational corporation. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Like, it's a real person's job. And she was telling me, you know, it gets really stressful because we have to protect her from fraud and all this kind of stuff. And it was very interesting. And then she goes, oh, what, what are you doing at the moment? And I was like, oh. Just walk away. <laughs> oh, the other day, um, I tried to buy... I tried to buy a donut costume and uh, didn't find the time, even though Kmart was open for 24 hours. It's pretty stressful. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw this look in her face. It was like, oh, you're not on my level, are you? You're still a child. Yeah, this happens all the time to me. It's yeah. just like, yeah, my friends have since high school gone on to do responsible adult things with like, their like life. Like stressful jobs. Yeah. They're, 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 look, they've moved out. We both still live at home. Yeah. I think the hardest thing I've done this week was call New Zealand and put on a New Zealand accent and try and convince a bakery to deliver seven lemon slices to Australia. Like lemon that's slices. the hardest thing I've yeah. done. Yeah, all that, week. but that was dude, that was stressful. That I was, was stressed pretty for stressful. You. I, I mean, was, yeah. I, I took I didn't even make the call and I took a ten minute power nap outside the studio <laughs> afterwards. So I was just I was done. But yeah, I met a seventeen year old the other day mm. uh, who's lived out of home. Yeah, she lives out of home and I, you know she's telling me like oh, I'll go grocery shopping and stuff. I was just like. So she was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do... do my laundry. And I was like, <laughs> I don't even do that. I was like, what's that? <laughs> I'm like, is that some kind of Pokemon? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't do, yeah, I don't do yeah. grocery shopping. What's um, laundry's attack speed? I've got no idea. <laughs> Luke, it's time to start advertising this station. We're the only show on this station. More people need to hear about this thing. And in particular, our show, because we're the only show on the station. Yeah, so we're, we're about the most important part of Triple yeah. M Modern Digital, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I mean, there's a few good Foo Fighters promos, but other than that, we're probably close second. Yeah, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but yeah. we just wanted to get the word out there today. We're like, you know what? We need more people to know about our show, particularly in the office. I've spoken yeah. to some people, and they're cause we're <laughs> always just doing random stuff around the office, like rooting the kitchen, putting sausages in the toaster. They're like, what do you do here? And we're like, yeah, oh. Some people actually <laughs> don't know and, that we're on radio. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, we're on a show on Triple M Modern Digital. And they're like, oh, do we have a digital station? <laughs> <laughs> so we just thought, you know what? We just need to start off internally. First. At least we need we need to yeah. our our, the, our co-workers to know yeah. about us. So Lewis had a business plan, or more a marketing plan for yeah. our show. Because in the Triple M office, there is a massive, beautiful painted mural that's like floor to ceiling mural of Eddie Maguire, Mick Malloy, and Luke Darcy. And Luke Darcy. I know you don't know him because he's a football player. <laughs> so. I got, thank you so much for saying his name because I was really lost and I didn't want to offend anyone. Ex Western Bulldog star, great player. A great man. Thank, anyway. thank you, Luke. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought, you know what? Triple M Modern Digital needs its own mural. But we don't have any painting budget or mural budget, so I thought I'll just draw our By own By the way, one. this thing's on a whole wall. It's taller than Lewis, so yeah. that gives you some it's kind of scale. actually bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I'll just get an A4 piece of paper. I found some whiteboard markers, and I'll draw our own mural. So I started drawing me really long. I started drawing Luke really fat. It's uh, what, what did you think of the mural? Uh... Accurate, but funny. Yeah, yeah. So basically, picture a five-year-old drawing us. That's basically what it looks like. And I thought, you know what? I'll get our mural and blue tack it to Eddie Maguire's face on their mural. And this is what happened. Here's the mural for Triple M. Uh, I think it's very unfair that we don't have our own mural. So I figured that here's Eddie Maguire, uh, Triple M, modern digital. What do you reckon, Luke? That's heaps better, isn't it? 
I don't think they're going to be happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks great. <laughs> Let's go show our producer. Um, whatever time works. Hey Maddie, we made we made a triple M modern digital mural. <laughs> what do you think? Do you like it? Do you reckon Eddie McGuire would like that? Oh, Eddie's gonna love that. Yeah. So we'll just leave it there. Yeah, I think that's fine. Right. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just leave hey, it there then. I just got a text from Maddie. It says. Haha, <laughs> that's funny, but seriously, Eddie will kill you. And <laughs> don't wreck the bait. I'm not moving it. <laughs> now, I said that I'm not moving it. I thought that was a beautiful mural, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and I told you at this stage that I actually had a run in with Eddie in yeah, the we elevator didn't think, we this We thought, morning. you know what, the only person who wouldn't like this is Eddie McGuire because the poster does cover his own face. But, you know, he's had that wall for at least a decade. Yeah. I think it's time for a bit more of a modern digital oh, mate, mural. You like three TV shows. You don't need your head on another wall. All yeah, right? so exactly. I actually had a run in with him this morning in the elevator. I was getting in and he was going down the elevator. I clicked the up button. Oh, for did some... you make a good first impression? No, for some reason, <laughs> right? For some reason, it opened. Yeah. And uh, it opened when I was trying to go up. He was going down. I get in the elevator. I didn't realize. And then he's so just in the corner. So you don't know how an elevator works. So I gave the nod to him. And I was like, he's like, mate. And he's like, mate, this uh, elevator's going down. And uh, I went, oh, no worries. So I just jumped out of the elevator. But on the way out, the door started closing. I walked into the door head first, smashed my shoulder and my head. He laughed at me. And then I just stumbled out of the out of the locker. And I, the last thing I heard was him laughing at me. And so Eddie already thinks I'm an idiot. And now you've gone and done this. <laughs> Uh, before the break, you initiated a foolproof marketing plan to get our show on Triple M Modern Digital well known internally within the office. Yes, flawless plan. Uh, internal marketing, incredibly important so that the co workers are on your team, but also external marketing is very important too. And I left that up to you. Yeah, so, what now, have you got? Before the show, I also was a very busy boy. Uh, mm-hmm. I just thought, I thought, you know what? All shows need money, and with money, we need a sponsor. That's how you That's get That's a money. good idea, because yeah. we don't have a sponsor, do we? Yeah. So I thought, great, I'm going to try and get a sponsor. I realized very quickly that um, we probably couldn't get money. So I was like, you know what? If we could get something <laughs> like for, for promotion, for a business, in exchange for goods or lunch, because it's Luke and Lewis still, for lunch. That counts. Uh, yeah. And also, I found out before I made the call that it was uh, World Pasta Day today. Oh, I, Everyone I, knows, I know obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, I've been celebrating all day. Been counting the days <laughs> since uh, last October 25th. Mm, um, yeah. Uh, I've been I've been fasting for a year, and that was the only year I ate pasta. <laughs> um, so there, there's a pasta place right downstairs, right yep. uh, from the radio station. I thought I'd give them a call, good idea, and uh, and you know inquire about perhaps a potential sponsorship offer. It's our South Melbourne Jasmine speaking. How are you going? Uh, is this Edo, the pasta place? Yes. Yes. How are you going? Uh, my name's Luke from uh, Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital, just the radio show upstairs. Yep. Um, and we're wondering, uh, firstly, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> um, because it's well past the day. I'm assuming you're celebrating it. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we all are, aren't we? <laughs> of course. Who yeah. wouldn't? Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, so what, what I was calling you about is I wanted to offer you guys the opportunity of a lifetime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Would you be interested in sponsoring the Luke and Lewis for Lunch show on Triple M Modern Digital for just for today, just for World Pasta Day, in exchange for two free pastas of our preference? Um, should have to talk to my boss. I can, I can give you his number. Is the boss not in today? Not today. On World Pasta Day. I know. Can you believe it? Does he know it's World Pasta Day? I think oh he's God, made I a mistake. Know he knows. I didn't even know. He even informed me. You didn't know. I didn't know. What, so... I'm just so what, confused. What is it Sorry, you've you baffled me that you have no idea as to what World Pass it is. Um, yeah, if you could give me the boss's number, that'd be great. We'll give him a call. The boss wasn't in on World Pasta Day, and he calls himself a pasta restaurant owner, I'm assuming. Yep. Ridiculous. No, no. That's so ridiculous. So Luigi didn't pick up the phone, uh, <laughs> so I gave her a call back. Uh, yeah, so I, I called the called boss. I back. called the boss. He didn't pick it up. He's taking a day off. Of uh, he's probably pasta celebrating. Day. I'll give him that. <laughs> okay. But uh, I gave her a call back, and this is how it went down. I wasn't going to give up here, so I g- gave her another call back. It's our South Melbourne Chessman speaking. How are you going? It's Luke from Luke and Lewis again. Hello again. No, uh, so I just called your boss, didn't pick uh-huh. up. So um, I'll, get, I'll just take that as a yes. 
So what is it that you want from us, exactly? In exchange for an official sponsorship for today's show, two free pasta meals of our preference. Yes, so you want us to give you two pasta? Yeah, otherwise, I mean, I will go to um, La Paqueta. I'm, I'm happy to make that call. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure that's fine. Y- you're sure that's fine? <laughs> So, so could you officially say that you are the official sponsor of the Luke and Lewis show for for World Pass today? So what's what's that? What's what's in it for us? Uh, we'll plug your show, Edo Pasta in South Melbourne. Uh, throughout the show. Why not then? How All many right. times would you like us to plug it? <laughs> as many times as you fancy. Okay. Come down. Um, can you wait to come for the free passes until after about two? Yeah, great. Our show finishes at two. Perfect. Oh, Actually, perfect. can I claim mine tomorrow? Because I, j- I bought in a lasagna today. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's no worries. Um, so I'll just say Luke's coming in for two pastas, yeah? Yeah, two pastas. Awesome. Cool. We've done thanks. It. Okay, happy, thank you very uh, much. Happy day. No worries. Happy pasta day. We're all celebrating. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now, did it. We did it. Firstly, well done. Thank you. And uh, without faster. further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would officially, I do fancy. You do fancy? Yeah, I said. I, I also fancy. Yeah, I'm, I'm allowed to plug it whenever I fancy. So yes. when I fancy right now, ladies and gentlemen, that segment was proudly brought to you by Edo Pasta in South Melbourne. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Edo Pasta South Melbourne. We'll be there after the show to pick up our pasta. This is Luke and Lewis for lunch, sponsored by Edo Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> As the listeners know, tomorrow is the day of our great race. So yes. I've challenged Luke to a race. He used to be a runner. The rules are he's not allowed to train for a month. I could train every day. And the, the day is tomorrow where this race is happening. The day is finally come. Australian sporting history shall be made. I'm actually feeling really fit at the moment. Really? It feels good. I'm actually I feel can- disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like a, I feel like a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been smashing them. Baker's yeah. Delight has just got their new best customer. Dude, I they see me as a regular now. Like, You're going to be shocked. Like I went down to... there yesterday. She's like, just the usual. And I almost turned around. That made me upset. <laughs> and then, but usual but I Baker's did it. Delight. And I was like, yeah. just. But I obviously didn't turn around. No way. You've so, got to commit. Yeah. So. Life hack, by the way. Heat up your, your rolls from Baker's Delight in their little microwave they have on the side. Wasn't doing it for a week. Yeah, you told started me. Started week two, it blew my mind. It, yeah, it was a great idea. Chub tips. <laughs> <laughs> But we thought that, uh, you know, every good race needs a good commentator. So we put the word out to our listeners and we asked people to send in auditions for uh, commentating a clip yeah. that we made, just a 20 second clip. And we thought we would pick the best commentator. Because we'll be running at the time and, mm. uh, you know, it'll be a very quiet race. For radio, not great if you don't have anyone commentating it. Yeah. So uh, this was, uh, and we've, we've decided on a winner overnight. Yes. We've, uh, of, after We've got many, thousands of entries. Oh, thousands, thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Yes. Millions. <laughs> None internally, though, because no one here knows we have a show. Yes. But, um, yeah, this was, uh, what we, this was the audition that we went with. It's Tom from Ballarat after hours. Right, we see some sort of rooster-human hybrid strutting into a very narrow kitchen. Here he's filling up a cup of water just to pour on his head. I think the reason you're on radio is because nobody can see you. Now we see some sort of draft. He nearly ripped the door off of a microwave. He's grabbed something out there. Gluten-free dry wheat bix because we all know if little Lanky Lewis has his gluten, he's going to start wigging out, isn't he? So that was our award-winning commentator. Uh, very professional, but also quite mean. Yeah. Uh, but that, for some reason, didn't affect his chances at all. No. <laughs> I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Tom is driving down from Ballarat tomorrow, so we thought we should give him a call now to confirm. To Just see to he's let coming. him know that he's He's given won. us his number. Uh, let's punch that number in now, Michael, and give Tom a call to congratulate him. Hello? Hi. Hey, Tom. Is this Tom from Ballarat? It is. It's Luke and Lewis. Congratulations, mate. You're our official commentator. Oh, thank you. Oh. Well done. How do you feel about it? I'm so excited. That's brilliant, mate. Could you just commentate how you're feeling about being our official oh, commentator? I'm, I'm, I was a bit nervous, but um, I'm, fe- I'm feeling pretty excited. That's <laughs> <laughs> have we picked the right guy for the job here, Tom? <laughs> Mate, we're gonna have to com- we're gonna have to get you to commentate your feelings much faster than that. Ready? Go. Oh, right, I'm, I'm feeling very excited. Um, I'm, I'm getting. Um, I don't really know what to say. Uh, <laughs> That's fair enough. Tomorrow. It's a strange request. But how are you feeling about commentating the race tomorrow? Do you do you think you're the right man for the job, Tom? Oh, you picked the perfect man for the job, Lewis. And you're travelling. That That's was, actually Luke. That was Luke. That's, uh, that was Luke. So I think uh, right, we might have to reconsider this one, Luke. Yeah. You do you know the difference it's between us? Nervous, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, so you're travelling two hours tomorrow from Ballarat to come to the race. 
correct. From regional Victoria. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m. Um, bring, if you want to bring, what are commentators? Wear a suit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, wear a suit. Just just dress up fancy. Wear something nice. Um, will and there be uh, a microphone supplied? Yes, there will be a microphone yes. for you. We've got we've got all the gear supplied, so just come looking beautiful and uh, with a good attitude. And More ri- sounding and, beautiful. Yes, yeah, sound beautiful, look beautiful, and have a good attitude and one that also realizes that you're not going to be paid for this. Because oh, okay. <laughs> we don't have a budget. <laughs> or petrol money, gonna... so good luck paying for that too, Tom. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. We'll see you at the race. We might be able to give you some pasta. Oh, all right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. See ya. What a good sport. I'm very happy to have Todd here. Not- Tom, nothing like a bit of free labour. <laughs> you don't even if you spoke to him, you don't even know his name. Well, he didn't know your name, so now we're even. Thank you very much, Todd. We'll see you tomorrow. It's Luke- proudly sponsored by Edo South, <laughs> South Melbourne. Sorry, I just fancied it. It's time to talk about uh, Luke's rig, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I love uh, this topic. Yeah. Oh, actually, three years ago it was a good topic. <laughs> now it's a bit, a bit of a sloppy topic. <laughs> Yeah, so you've been uh, intentionally unhealthy for the past uh, 30 days, really. Mm. and <laughs> Two years. Yeah. yeah, two years. I've been saying, that's the thing, I've been using this bet as an excuse to not do anything. Like, someone yeah, will be like, hey, you mate, it. can you have a cucumber? And I'm like, oh, that wouldn't help me, you know, in this bet. Because so. really, diet... Diet was not part of the rules at all. No. It was just you were not allowed to I've train, added that myself. <laughs> and then you were like, how? Oh, I would. I also like donuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, true. I've. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway. So. Uh, it's taken over this You've one. shown me videos of you being when you were a runner, when mm. you were a state level athlete, and you had you know, good rig, yeah. if you don't mind my saying. Yeah. So. Uh, um, actually, can you say it again? <laughs> you, you had an incredible body, my stop good it. friend. All right, stop it. You, <laughs> you're coming across way too strong now, Lewis. <laughs> Can I get your phone number? <laughs> you already have it. Um, but uh, how how is your, how's the rig looking now? Um, I'm not going to get it out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm not running to the beach. I'm not going. Come yeah. on, guys, let's get on Instagram and take a topless pic. I'm just going. Like, hang on. No, <laughs> I'm going to keep this t-shirt on. So you, yeah. you're, you're now you're now one of those people. Still who look good a in t- a t-shirt. Yeah, you, but but you like you'll wear a t-shirt in the pool. Kind of. Oh, no, I'm not like one of those rushy kids. I have more shame than that. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. It's more shameful to be, I think, yeah. You well, can be 200 kilos and still not wear a rashy. I don't have more respect for you. Yeah, that's true. But um, I thought, I think this might make you reconsider. I actually gave your girlfriend a call to uh, get a bit of a rig update. And uh, this is what <sighs> she had to say. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Emily. It's Lewis. How are you going? Good, thanks, Lewis. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. Um, I just wanted to give you a call to uh, check up on how Luke is going with his uh, non-training. Oh, fantastic. He is killing this non-training. Yep. He's, this is probably the hardest I've seen him work at something. Oh, good. And, and he's saying, he said to me the other day that this is the most unfit that he's ever felt in his life. And I was wondering if, if that translates visually, because you've been with him for <laughs> years and years. So you would have seen him at his peak fitness level. He would have looked great. What does he look like now? Definitely, definitely does not have abs. There's definitely a bit of a dad bod starting. starting <laughs> dad bod. That's awesome. And are you, are you one of those girls that are into dad bods? Like, is, is this an improvement for you or... Um, not an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're, so you're not you're not into the dad bod. Not into the dad bod. Okay. Unfortunately for Luke, he's not rocking it. I'm sorry to say. Well, uh, I'm sorry to break it to you, but uh, he's actually we've agreed that he's not going to be training for another two more months because we're doing a weightlifting challenge next. What do you think of that? I think he's going to have a heart attack and probably die from <laughs> <laughs> all these extra donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we're joking. We we wouldn't want to do that to him. We don't need uh, we don't need Luke to be dying at thirty from obesity. So uh, this this you'll be happy to know that that uh, once I beat him in this race, he'll be back to training. Well, I can't imagine he actually would go back to training after this, Lewis. But thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> All right. So do you have any uh, any final words about Luke's dad's vibe before we go? Uh, no, but I'll say good luck to you, Lewis. Um, hopefully, hopefully you win the race. Oh, I don't need the luck, but thank you for the thought. I do appreciate it. Well, I was it. just I was going on your team anyway, but yeah, yeah. you yeah. definitely got it in the bag. Don't worry. Oh yeah, I could I could jog this and I'd still smash him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emily. See ya. Bye. bye. Hello. Hi, it's Lewis again. Sorry, I just <laughs> called you back. I forgot. Uh, it's your birthday today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, happy birthday, Emily. Thanks, Lewis. Do you want to know what I got you? Uh, a big fat boyfriend. That's exactly what I got you. 
<laughs> I hope you enjoy your boyfriend. That's your present. You. Luke has a dad bod now. Happy birthday, Emily. Thanks for that best present I could get. Yeah, that's all right. See you later. Bye. <laughs> And there we have it, Luke. This is why my master plan all along, this month-long thing, was just to get uh, Emily uh, a present for her birthday, the chubbiest boyfriend alive. And here I was thinking I hadn't got her a good enough gift. (laughs) You're welcome, Emily. It's time for a segment that I don't want to do. Oh, well, bad luck. (laughs) So, yesterday, uh, while in the food court downstairs, uh, I was just filming you get your lunch on Snapchat. As you have done for the past three days. Yes. uh, Just let me go to Baker's Delight without being filmed of you pretending to be a fan. Sorry, we are not going to plug Baker's Delight. Uh, Let me let you go to Edo Pasta in South Melbourne. You didn't ask if I fancied. uh, Do you fancy? Yes, I do. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, I was filming you having lunch and uh, I didn't think anything of it. Put the video up on my Snapchat and uh, about an hour later, checked to see, you know, what's been happening on Snapchat. Chat about 20 people had messaged me saying, Is Lewis going bald? Has he got a bald spot? Which I'm a bald spot is what you get when you're like 45. Like, they're not talking receding hairline, they're talking, yeah. Does Lewis have a bald spot on the top yeah. of his head, top, front, and center cranium, like right in the middle? Which right where I, I definitely don't, yeah. Well, okay, you let people be the judge. The photo, like the video evidence on my Snapchat is damning against you. This... Now, you're go- I know your defense is, oh, it was a lighting issue, but we've put the photo up on our Instagram over on the Luke and Lewis Instagram right now. Yeah, go and have a look. I think everyone will agree that that is not a bald spot. That is just the light reflecting off the top of my hair because I use hairspray. That's all, right. all that well, it is. Do you think they'll agree? Let's get up a jury right now. <laughs> do we have to do a phone call segment <laughs> yes. over this? I yes. think it's pretty odd. Obvious that no. I'm not going bald. Give us a call on one three hundred one six one double zero six. Is Lewis going bald? Let's get up a jury and let let's let the people okay. Decide. We'll let we'll let's let, let it, leave it up to the decide. we'll leave it up to the people for this ridiculous question. One three hundred double zero six. No, no. One three hundred one six one double zero six. Give us a call. Do you think I have a bald spot on the top of my head? The answer is no, but I'll I'll debate it with you anyway. Before the break, uh, we put it out there. So yesterday on my Snapchat, I was filming you in the food court. A few people started messaging me that are uh, suggesting that perhaps that you were thinning on top. People saying, is Lewis balding? And now, in the video... Years old, do I have a giant circular bald spot on yes. the top of my head? Yeah, and they weren't suggesting receding hairline. It was it looked <laughs> like in the photo. And the fo- we put the photo up on our Instagram, uh-huh. and we decided to get you guys to decide. Because you... Just quickly, we got, a first, we got our first comment on that post, yeah. and it said uh, that... That ain't no bald spot laughing face, okay? So, straight away, I'm already being agreed with. That's clearly the light bouncing off the top of my head. that person's vision impaired. Um, (laughs) So, uh, our first caller, Matt. Matt, is Lewis balding? First off, Lewis, you dug your own grave when you sent the photo. So, yeah, that's not just a bald spot. It's actual balding. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate you there. Uh, We'll get to our... Next caller. Jesse. Uh, Jesse. Is Lewis balding? Uh, yes, he is definitely balding. And why? Why do you think I'm going bald? You've seen the uh, photo? I have seen the photo, and it's pretty obvious that you're balding. And I have a theory as to why you are balding. Okay, what's your, what's your theory, you genius? Well, <laughs> well, you see, you've been trading, as we all know, for this great race. Yes. And uh, as all athletes have to do to become good at sports, they take steroids. <laughs> And, uh, Objection. <laughs> I don't know if all athletes do that. And I have not been doping. You tell that to Lance Armstrong, mate. All right. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So, uh, Dean, uh, wh- am, I, am I going bald? I can't even believe... I can't believe Is I'm even Lewis asking these questions. Dean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See? Thank you very much, Dean. What's your reason, your Dean? I think Lewis uses all that hair product to cover up the fact that he's balding. Yeah, this is true. Camouflage. Lewis slicks his hair back, and it's not its not because it looks fashionable. It's because you're, you're covering something you're up. Me, look at the top of my head. Yeah. Not, I'm definitely Mate, you not look like Vin to... Diesel, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, final caller. Ned, am I going bald on the top of my head? Uh, I reckon it's lighting effect, maybe, with how much product you wear in your hair. Exactly. Thank you very much, Yeah, Ned. the product but, which but, covers up the bald spot, Ned. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I was, was going to say, it does kind of look like you have a receding hairline, though. <laughs> 
Okay, now this is just ridiculous. I'm not going bald from all angles. I get the receding hairline every now and then because my hairline is a V. That's how it naturally is. And let me tell you, I definitely am do not have a receding hairline because I get these comments every now and then and I do check in the mirror. I go, maybe I am going bald. And I go, oh, no, wait. I just have a massive solar panel five head. No, nah, all right. Okay, you're wrong. <laughs> you do have a five head, though. All right, well, um, hey, maybe we get this show sponsored by Rogaine. Yeah, all right. This is Luke <laughs> and uh, Peter Garrett from Midnight Oil. <laughs> on Triple M Modern Digital. <laughs> Just after we did the worst segment that I think we've ever done for me personally, it is time to do one of my favourite segments. Businesses Exposed. Ah, you've been a naughty business. Now, Businesses Exposed is where I expose... Is your head a business? <laughs> Are you exposing your head for being bald? I'm, I'm quit. I quit. This, <laughs> this is uh, Luke and Michael. Aldi driving... <laughs> Stop! All right? I'm trying to expose a naughty business here. This is so much more important than the top of my head. All right? So, uh, I think you would have heard, Luke, about um, the shock horror. Luke and the guy from The Last Airbender. <laughs> Just stop. It's cease and desist, okay? I'm sick of this bald abuse. Sorry. Okay, go. All expose. Right. Expose away. Okay. I mean, your head already is, but that's oh, right. Stop it! Uh, <laughs> All right, so um, you would have heard about Crown Casino getting absolutely blasted for allegedly rigging their poker machines to be harder to win. Yes, I was across this. Yes, so you would think that maybe I'm about to expose Crown for rigging their machines, wouldn't you? Well, that, that would be a big target. Yes, but uh, no, I'm going even higher than that, okay? Crown, really, when you think about it, kind of just their job, making poker machines hard to win. Don't you think? Yeah, I don't think they're hiding the fact that the poker machines are difficult. No. So I'm exposing... That's why it's called a jackpot. Exactly. I'm exposing news.com.au for attempting to expose Crown for something that everybody already knows, okay? <laughs> don't step into my realm of exposing businesses. This is my job, news.com.au, and I'm here to defend Crown and... Well, not defend well, gambling. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. Crown's evil. News.com is evil. Just not no, not eviler. Just incorrect, and that's what I'm here to be. Very petty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because really, it's not a surprise. So basically, if you don't know, uh, apparently, according to news.com, to you, uh, Crown has been making their poking machines harder to win for people. Now. That's just their job. Like, I don't understand why this would shock anyone. Like, how do you walk into Crown and see, like, the three-story high fountain and marble floors and walls yeah. and Lamborghinis parked out the front that are, you know, by the owners of Crown? How do you walk into that, see all of, like, the million-dollar lobby and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to win? <laughs> Where do you think they got yeah, their yeah, fountain got money from? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to walk into the place and I'm going to smash this. Yeah, no. the marble staircase doesn't pay for itself. Exactly. And they, the, the how they do it is with poking machines. So to try and expose Crown... Yeah, and roulette and blackjack and everything else. It's in their, three the levels of impossible games. Yeah. Like, really, when you think about it, I don't even understand how Crown makes money. It's yeah. just people It's just people going... It's, it's like a business... You notice you can't play soccer at Crown. <laughs> like, it's just blackjack and roulette. Yeah, there's no skill-based <laughs> no. games. There's nothing that you could... Hey, if you get good at this, you'll win. No, yeah. it's just creating the illusion of a game that you could like get Like, the good easiest at. thing is the claw machine in the lobby. Like, that's the easiest. If you want to win at Crown, just put $2 in that for 20 minutes, okay? Because yeah. that you'll probably lose less. You'll come up with a soft toy. Yeah, at least you'll get a minion better. plush toy. Yeah, that's way better than a gambling addiction and a giant mortgage. I don't know if it is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis for lunch on Triple M Modern Digital. Proudly now, sponsored by Edo Pasta in South Melbourne. You didn't ask me if I fancied it. I fancied it. <laughs> Can you and ask me? Lewis, do you fancy me plugging this sponsor? Yes, I do. Sponsored by Edo Pasta, just in downstairs. South Melbourne, <laughs> just downstairs. The best pasta in the game, because they are official sponsor for today, because uh, it's well past the day. And for plugging them multiple times on our show, whenever we fancy them, we're getting free lunch. So this I, has no benefit for the listeners. I'm a little bit suspicious. I think her shift might just end at two. Yeah. And we'll walk in we'll with like, free updated. pasta, give us it. But if, we'll let you if know. If we're going to get free pasta today, I will revoke all sponsorship tomorrow live on air and we'll apologize. We'll sponsor their nearest competitor tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. La Paqueta. <laughs> tomorrow we'll be sponsored by La Paqueta. Sorry, today we're not mentioning them. Yeah, so th those <laughs> are evil. all about Edo Pasta in South Melbourne. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been a bit of a scandal during the show. Um, earlier in the show, we uh, played you a recording of me drawing the new mural. I thought for you were about to say I grew my hair back, and I was like, that didn't happen. <laughs> I hate this show now. <laughs> 
Um, so we, uh, I, I made a new mural to ab- launch an extensive internal advertising campaign to let our co-workers know that Triple M Modern Digital exists. Yeah. Um, I and- put this mural, I blue tacked, I blue tacked it over the top of Eddie Maguire's head on his mural, mm. which I thought looked great. Don't, yeah. wouldn't you agree? It looked great up there. Yeah. It, it was one of the, I would say a bit of a highlight of my morning and also probably one of the best marketing plans I've seen ever engaged. Made internally. everyone really aware. You know, we're the only ones doing internal marketing plans as well for our show. And you know what? It works. It yeah. works so well. We were so proud of this mural that we thought, hey, Michael, come check out the mural. We took him downstairs and it was gone. In two minutes, someone had ripped it down off Eddie Maguire's face. And I think that's an outrage. Or well, Eddie's come back into the building, maybe. Well, maybe he saw it, but uh, I think he would have approved. Gone, that's a, that's a big benefit to uh, to the station. We want Triple M Modern Digital to get known, and now, and then he would know about it. So I yeah. think it's good. So I thought, okay, well, maybe uh, the size was the problem. Maybe Eddie Maguire didn't want it over his face. So I decided to make another poster, <laughs> but just a small one on a post-it note, not an A4 piece of paper. And this is what happened. I'm not very happy. I went and checked the mural five minutes later, and our better mural was gone from Eddie's face. So I drew a smaller one. I figured size may have been the problem. So I have a post-it note version of the poster. Let's let's put it back on the mural. If we get fired for this, I'm going to say, I think you'll agree, it'll be absolutely worth it. No way. <laughs> nah, it's pretty funny. I can't believe it's been taken down. I think Eddie's face was the issue. So this one here, that's Ned Kelly, isn't it? He doesn't work here. That's beautiful. I reckon that'll get us a lot of listeners. Yeah. Cool. Depending on what you're worth by that, mean the music, not me with an office draw. So uh, you put that, <laughs> you put our new mural, which was on a post-it note, in the bottom right-hand corner, right at the bottom of the mural, on Ned Kelly's face. Yeah, it's about ankle height. Yeah. It's the size of a post-it note. But you so... know what? It's working. We got a message on our Facebook page <laughs> from an employee here. <laughs> that we have not met as that well. That we have not met. A guy who works here said, uh, best ad guys listening to the show now. <laughs> So he's aware of it. Well done, Lewis. So James from mar- sales is listening. Our internal marketing campaign has worked, but I am more worried about who tried to sabotage our internal marketing campaign. Someone ripped down our original poster, which means we have well, a traitor. Well, I think suspect number one would have to be Eddie. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have to ask Eddie Maguire if he took down our poster. If he did, I'm outraged. But we're going to have to find out where our poster di- is, because we looked in bins. We looked yeah. in all the we bins We looked in around. all the bins. That was the obvious place to put. Because everyone what? has their own personal bins. Right, so everyone would have thought a three-year-old drew it and accidentally I yeah. don't know wanted to stick it on there. Although fridge. everyone was staring at us when we were initiating our marketing. Plan. They knew. Okay, everyone saw it, so there is a culprit. So I think to find out who uh, took our poster down and where our poster is, because obviously it's not a bin, they must be holding it hostage, I'm going to put up missing poster posters around the, <laughs> o- around the office, and hopefully that'll help us track it down. And put one on Eddie's face just so they see it. <laughs> This brings us to the end of our show, but it's time to talk about the great race, which is happening tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big day. So much build up, so much lead up, all to this. Literally an entire month. Our first month of radio has all led up to this. This moment, which is, well, tomorrow's moment. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) so we still have one more show before it, because it is at 6 p.m. after the show tomorrow. Yes. Uh, 6 p.m. at night. uh, Meet Outside the warm-up track, outside Albert Park, Lakeside Stadium. So yes. it's near the lake, near the uh, athletics track. But we're not doing it on the athletics track because Lewis is a street runner yes. and felt like I had an advantage on the track. I'm and, on the streets. And this is I once on again a cowering move from him. Oh, buy your own donut costume. Oh, drink three big M's. Mate, do you honestly, at the start of this month... This isn't, s- no, this is not me being scared of you. This yes, is our is. agreement, which is you were not allowed to train. You breathe. This isn't me being scared. This is you being punished. For cheating, I saw you jog on the Travelator for thirty meters. Mm. I saw you jog on Snapchat. So accept your punishment and stop trying to make it about me being scared nah, of scared. Uh, what is essentially uh, the slowest man alive at this point. Yeah, you know what? You're actually not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like every day, I keep saying I'm confident. I was thinking about it last night. I'm like, I'm like, look, I'll still beat you, but like, but I was thought I was going to beat you by like 200 meters. Now I think I'll just beat you by like 89 or something like. You're you being know. ridiculous. But all of the information for our, for the race is in the Facebook event, which is on the Luke and Lewis Facebook page. You can yeah. see the address, the times, all of the information. Make sure you join that. There is now uh, almost 300 people in this thing. So <laughs> this is getting out of hand, I think. But that's, okay. uh, that's what we're all bigger about. crowd for. To, I can say if I win, can I get like chaired off 
Yeah, but well, don't don't like throw me up and down because I will if they have can lift two liters of Big M in me. I don't know if they'll be able to lift you. Yeah, true. <laughs> Everyone, bring a forklift so we can chair me off. <laughs> but uh, here's the rules: if you are supporting Luke, make sure you bring some unhealthy food for him. Donuts Tim Tams and donuts. Tim Tams are preferred. Uh, whereas if you are an intelligent person, you're supporting me. Come dressed in active wear so that we uh, basically have uh, you know a uniform to wear. Mm, dress like an Instagram model if you want to support Lewis. Yeah, uh, exactly. But make sure you don't have any hair because that would be. Okay, you know what? I'm sick of these jokes. You can finish the show. Yourself. Yep. <laughs> I walked out yesterday. You can't steal my no, joke. I'm walking out. Uh, Lewis is... Look at my hair as I leave the room. Okay, Bye. Lewis has gone to a hair replacement clinic. Uh, he's getting laser <laughs> surgery, everyone. I'm going to end the show today. This is Luke, and uh, who's another bald guy? Luke and Michael, do you know any bald people? George Costanza, maybe. This is Luke and George Costanza and all Kevin from The Office on Triple M Modern Digital. <laughs> <laughs>